Okay, we're back. It's been a bit of a while. Uh, life, COVID, kids' birthdays, work, all got in the way of the channel a bit. So apologies for somewhat of a bit of a lag in terms of getting tutorials out. But back on, back on the tools and back into it. This particular mm, discussion, should we say it's not really a tutorial, it's more of a showcase and talking through of something that you may or may not have seen. So if you've gone to the Udesley homepage recently or kind of been around the forums a bit, you probably would have seen an increased emphasis on their theme oriented stuff. But the cool thing is, is now they're creating not only themes just to get started in Webflow, you're also creating themes that that will work with Udesley and convert over into the platform of your choice. This is really cool because it gives you a really strong foundation to get started with your build. However, we're gonna go through a few, mm, few things that you need to kind of know and be aware of when you're using these templates because although you think, okay, it's gonna work seamlessly straight out the box, there's still a little bit of stuff that you need to do. And the tutorials that I'm putting out and the stuff on the Udesley University is not gonna go away because you're gonna to need to have some of that stuff ready in your in your toolbox. But, and all in that, it's kind of, it makes your life a little bit more simple and it hopefully will teach you kind of how to, to use Udesley more efficiently. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so if we're looking at the Udesley homepage, you will see that there's split into two things. We browse all templates. And we can see through here, we've got a whole number of different templates that we can choose from. Uh, some of them are coming soon. And the interesting thing that we can see is we've got these like compatible little icons. So that you know, if you're looking, building for a Jamstack site, you're gonna do look for Jamstack stuff. If you're looking for a Shopify one, then you're gonna be looking for Shopify. No, not that difficult. So the process is pretty simple in that one, you have to purchase the, the theme. Now, because it's a Webflow orientated project, it has to go through that whole Webflow side of things, so it'll deliver it through your Webflow account. What that means, though, is the Udesley, the, the Udesley orientated themes, so the ones that have the, the custom attributes configured and basically the project set up in order for the conversion to work, has to be sent to you manually from Udesley to your account. It's pretty straightforward. All you need to do is purchase the theme, contact them, and they will deliver the theme to your account and you can go from there. Once you have that theme, it's pretty straightforward from there. All you need to do is literally run the configuration and export and you can install it on Shopify. However, what we're gonna go through is we're gonna see that there is some things that work and something that doesn't. Now you're gonna go, well, I've paid for this Udesley uh, converted theme. I expect it to work 100% out the box. Problem with that type of thinking is that your client, your requirements are all gonna be very different. So you have to think of these themes as foundations. The, the main reason being is like, you may want to include an app. You may want to change around some of the designs or you may want to add multiple different blocks, which, you know, you Disney and all the infinite wisdom, their crystal ball's not going to go that far. So these are very, very good to kind of get you started and kind of see how they pull together their themes and how they structure it. But you are going to still need to do some work yourself. Right. Okay, so some of those things that you might not see working in your particular theme that you purchase are gonna be things like navigation, footer. If you're gonna be using like the, the menu systems within a different platform, say for instance, we're gonna use Shopify as an example because it's kind of the, the most one that I seem to be doing at the moment. But like say for instance, you wanna use the Shopify menu system, you're gonna have to create that using the themes, but it's pretty straightforward and you can follow along to a number of different tutorials that I've already produced or you can look at Udesley University, unfortunately you're gonna see my mug anyway, but the, the idea there is that it's pretty straightforward once you understand how it all kind of works. Other things that you're gonna to need to tweak and change is gonna be adding more customized sub customizer support for like Shopify themes. So say for instance, and I'll show an example of this a little bit later on, if you wanna basically create new heading or sections and stuff like that, you're gonna to have to add in some custom attributes, but at least you'll see how it's supposed to work and you can go from there. And then obviously it's just design and styling to taste. You're gonna to wanna to put your own logo in there. You're gonna to wanna to maybe change the font or whatever it is like that. And then you can pretty much do that very, very quickly and very easily within Webflow, just as you normally would. So. Thumbs up. All right, so let's look at Snoop. This is the one I've got. So we're gonna pretend that I've gone and purchased the theme and they've emailed me the theme, which they have. And uh, so Snoop is this one here. It looks looks really nice out the box. So you can see it's Shopify compatible, uh, $79. And if I go into here, I can actually see how the, the theme is. And now if we look at the actual theme, it's got 
lovely animations. It's been pulled together beautifully. The design is as you would expect from Udesity. The team is fantastic with this type of stuff. And you've got the various different interactions, blog posts, etc., footer navs, the normal, normal bits. Okay, so first things first, what you do when you get one hold of one of these, these themes is to kick the tires and see how it's gonna work because we aren't gonna see all the things that are kind of embedded within this particular theme, how it's working under the skin or what, whatever it is. It's like any template. You don't know what it's doing because you haven't created it from yourself. So the best way to see what you need to do to it, uh, what you need to change, what you need to add, what you need to take away, is to see what it looks like on the destination platform. So we're gonna quickly run through the, the export process, configure our custom attributes using the Chrome extension, and then download and export the code, run it through the converter and install it on the site. Gonna speed through this part, so it's just gonna be a little time lapse. So uh, yeah, do the same. Okay, so here's a first little snag that we spotted. So it's coming out with an error, um, and you can see here the form name email two is not a valid one. This form we converted as a normal contact form instead. So it's not really a drama, but you can start to see that you might need to tweak that if you wanted it completely seamless. All right, so we just hit download. We're also gonna download the data because we're gonna install that data onto Shopify, and that will allow us to kind of test the theme a bit more than we would if it was just a blank store. Uh, one thing to note, if you are doing this and you don't want to install the, the data onto a client site, say for instance, they already have a site that's live, you really don't want to be messing around with that uh, that much. So it's much better to basically create like a partner account on Shopify or set up a, a, an own hosting environment for this particular testing process. That means you can work on the sites and kind of test and push the themes around without worrying about accidentally setting it live, which would be bad for you and your clients. Okay, so we have the template, we have the codes, we're gonna head on over to Shopify and we're just gonna install that and we're gonna go from there. Okay, so that's theme installed. Now we just need to add the data, just so we've got something to work with and we're gonna need the, the Udesly app installed on our specific site. So if you're doing this through Shopify, you're gonna to need to just go to the Udesly converter and just click and install the app. Pretty straightforward. Fine. Okay, so now we're here, we're just gonna go to apps. I've already got it installed, go to Webflow Importer, and then we can just drag and drop the JSON file onto the the area provided. So just add it there. Whoop. So let it do its thing, set up all those products and blog posts and all the stuff that we wanna see. Okay, so it's all imported. So now let's have a look at the what's working, what's not. So if we were to click on the online store, we can see that the theme has already been set up and it's all working pretty beautifully out the box. We've got products coming in here. We can see that it's all working in that regard, but we need to actually see what we can change, what we can edit, what, how do we utilize this theme to make it more relevant to our clients? Because obviously this is perfect for Snoop, but not for us. Uh, okay, so if we go into the customizer, we'll be presented with the Shopify backend. And we can see here that there's a number of sections that have been defined, so that's all great. And we can see here that we can change this particular copy, which is easy, and we can change the image. So we'll just select that one for, for, for now, and it all looks great. So awesome, so that's, that's good. Uh, this one is the same, so we can change all those different things, so that's great. So, but if we wanted to create another one, we would need to configure that, so it's no drama. Uh, we can see that it's pulling in uh, different products. Okay, so off the bit get go, the homepage looks pretty good. Obviously you might wanna just check that is it pulling in the right products or whatever, and you just go into your theme settings and you would you know, select your specific category. Obviously there's nothing in that particular one, but you get the point. But now uh, this is where we need to kind of go a little bit further to really check and sweat test this particular theme to make sure that it actually is working completely and it's not in certain places. So for instance, if we go into our about page, uh, you will see that it says 2018, 2018, and the same Laura Epson, same Laura Epson. So kind of superficially, yeah, okay, maybe they just ordered the same thing, but they haven't. The way that this theme's actually working, if we look at the configurator, we can see that it's only got three fields, and if I change any one of those, it's changing them all. And the reason being is because the way that's been set up in the web flow, and we'll quickly just flick into this, we can see here that when I click onto here, I can see it says option text year. 
And then this one says option text year as well. And now because it's all in one section, it's going, okay, fine. From the JSON point of view, I'm looking for that specific ID of year. And it's basically applying that bit of text to all of those fields. So if we wanted to use this exact same system, there's no drama. You just got to go into here and just go, yeah, I don't know, maybe put hyphen two. Finished. Not hard. Um, and then what it does is it will give you that the different things. So when you re-export this out, you're going to have year, year two, year one, year whatever. Um, and the same thing for the paragraph. Just got to literally go paragraph two and hit save. Very simple. Uh, but that's what's, what's happening. Okay, so we can see that we can fix that side of things. So that's all good. Uh, obviously, we can't edit any of the footer unless you set it up with the link system, which, you know, is a different tutorial and I'll lift, it's within the Shopify one. So have a look on that if you're wanting to do that and make it a bit more dynamic. It's really straightforward. Okay, so that's a prime example of areas that are going to need to be a tweak. There's going to be some areas on the site that you're going to need to completely redo and completely add features and functionality into. So in a case in point on this is if we look at like the collections list, okay, definitely needs some, some design and work there if you're going to be using it. Then we're also going to be looking at like the collections page. And again, so if we go into like the store catalog, we can see here that it superficially it looks fine. But if you wanted to change this navigation or create filter systems or add in, you know, if you've got more than you got quite a large catalog of products, you're going to need to add in an application. So this page is superficial, I would say at this point, and you'd really need to kind of work into that to make sure it's working for you. Another thing that we want to kind of look at is the product thing. And then when we go into these product pages, we will see here that, okay, fine. So the SKU, this is coming from the product details. So this is all configured, but we can only see where there's one price. And if I was to enter in a compare at price, I wouldn't actually see, or, or sales price, I wouldn't actually see anything because this is actually not configured. And how I know that is when I look at the actual theme, I can see here there's, in this hierarchy, there's only single product price. There's no compare it price. So pretty straightforward to solve. Copy and paste it, add your styling, and then just change that to compare it price. Now that if there's a sales price, it will display the sales price. So it's, again, it's, really simple. Uh, okay. The other thing we need to look at is when we scroll down, we've got these frequently asked questions. We've got these shipping information. We've also got this uh, shipping details. So for instance, you had specific care instructions for your product. What you may want to be doing on this is driving those or meter fields so that, so that you can have individual information per product. Uh, obviously at the moment that's not configured within New Desley because they don't know how you want to do that. So this is more just as a blanket this covers all products and all products that are using this particular template. So I have done an in-depth tutorial on custom meter fields, so I'm not going to go into this right now. If you do need to do that, have a look at that. Um, and I would make some recommendations around applications to use, etc. But it's pretty straightforward once you understand how it works. And it gives you that full customizability or whatever you need for that particular product page. So overall, the, the template comes out fully working. And you can see we've got, it's all kind of, working here, it's adding to cart, all that work is done. Uh, when we go into the, the product page, a number of people ask about the account pages and the great thing about looking at these temp templates is they are set up for the particular platform. So when you're doing looking to do an account page, it's pretty much everything you need to to have there is is done. It doesn't look like maybe you want to, maybe you want to elevate the design a bit, cool, but underlying the structure is there and that's a massive step forward and it makes your life a hell of a lot easier when you begin. So I'm not going to waffle on too much further. The only other thing I would like to show you is basically the search feature. So the search if I type in here, let's go East Coast and I hit search, it's going to drop into something that's quite quite basic, quite generic. So again, this is where it's important just to kind of sweat test the theme, see how it's working see its limitations and then develop on top of it. So these themes are a fantastic foundation, but you are going to need to continue to work onto them, but they are going to save you super amounts of time, uh, even if it's just getting to grips and understanding your Desley and the overall pipeline of how it works. You know, if you wanted to practice, for instance, it's, it's fantastic. Anyway, that's it for today. If you haven't already, please like, share and subscribe. I'm going to be trying to do more of these tutorials 
quicker. I do drink a lot of coffee, so if you do feel like buying me a coffee, that would be really helpful. It just kind of helps keep me awake with two small children. But other than that, thank you very much, and we'll catch you next one. Cheers. Bye.